everybody to Saturday Stories. I'm Claire Pranice and I've been running Saturday Stories since 2018 when we had it live at the Society of Illustrators in Manhattan. Now I'm going to tell you a bit about our amazing guest this morning. So uh, it's a great pleasure to have James Ransom here for many, many reasons. He's written more than, well, not written, sorry, he's illustrated more than 60 books. He also has written a number of books and he's done a collaboration with his wife, who's also uh, a writer. She's an amazing writer. She likes to write um, uh, real stories about people who existed and it's a historical um, uh, non-fiction but fictional stories as well and some of the books are um, Before She Was Harriet which is about Harriet, Harriet Tubman um, there's books um, what was it um, before he there was Mozart yeah, um, yeah. so the, there's a lot of amazing books if uh, you may all be familiar with James I'm sure there, we have fans in the audience um, but do check out his books at the library or actually you can buy them anywhere books are sold. Go to James's website, which Lindsay, who's behind the scenes, can type into the um, chat there for you. So you have a direct link. Um, he has lots of videos also. James is an amazing teacher. He's also been an educator. Um, he's been a professor um, for uh, Syracuse University for illustration department. Um, so James was born in North Carolina and he grew up there as a young child not really being um, taught art, particularly at school, but very fascinated and, and inspired by illustrations that he saw in books. And particularly he read the Bible to his grandmother where he saw some really beautiful illustrations of figures in amazing scenery with robes, as you can imagine, those were historic pictures. And so he started to copy those and get some ideas of how illustrators work and how the illustration is set in a scene. And um, then he decided, uh, this was something he was really interested in. And at high school, that segued into cinema interests and stories and uh, filmmaking. And finally, he goes to Pratt University of Art, the School of Art in New York, where he studied illustration and that's where he got his degree. And ever since he's been illustrating as a professional illustrator. And we've had the pleasure of seeing his work at the Society of Illustrators for many, many years. And in his, as I said, he's got many, many books. So you can see all of the books and he's gonna have some art shows soon. So, so you can see some um, paintings in real life as well. And today we are going to see a little um, workshop of how he does his drawings and um, he's going to do a presentation about other inspirations and work that he's done in the past and um, it's with great pleasure I introduce James Ransom this morning. Well thank you, thanks a lot. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Um, you know the Society of Illustrators means so much to me. Um, I remember being um, you know undergrad at Pratt Institute and going to the Society of Illustrators for the very first time you know, so you're in um, your sophomore year and you're learning about um, illustration and, you know, there's so many wonderful things you're discovering. Then when I discovered there's a museum uh, for illustrators, I was like, oh my God, I never forget the first time I went in and how um, it was just so amazing to see a museum dedicated to preserving this wonderful institution of illustration. I was just Floored, and um, I've always tried to stay connected to the Society of Illustrators. So it's really a pleasure, a pleasure to do this for the Society of Illustrators. Um, so I want, I'm going to get started. I'm going to um, do a PowerPoint presentation with you. Um, I'm going to stop at some point, and I'm going to actually walk you around my studio and show you. That's one of the advantages of doing these things virtually. I can actually walk you through the studio. Claire, I'm going to need your help with that because it's hard for me to. Yes. You know how fast I'm going, how slow I'm going, if the, if the, <laughs> if the um, camera's actually showing something interesting or, or just blurred lines or something. So yeah, no, we'll, 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 we'll give, help me out with that. give you a heads up how it's all looking. Thanks, James. Sounds, That's wonderful. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay, so let's let's um, share screens here. And we're going to, let's see here, start from the beginning. That sounds a good place to start. Okay. <laughs> So I was actually, I was born in North Carolina um, in a small little town called Rich Square, right about where that star is on the map. As you can see, I wasn't too far from Virginia. 
I wasn't too far from the Atlantic Ocean. I was in a small little town, and here is a picture of that little town. Two traffic lights, all about a block away from each other, so you could walk that, those two traffic lights, and everything else was stop signs. So we're talking small town USA, kind of like um, Mayberry meets Sanford in the sun, is sort of how I, I describe my um, neighborhood. That's me as a kid. And growing up in, um, in uh, also in this small town, um, Sheila Moses, a writer for children's books, was also um, born and raised there. And um, she's written a lot of books about um, Rich Square. And this Legend of Buddy Bush is a story that I heard as a kid. And we, we plan on doing a book together at some point. We're trying to work, find the right project to um, work on together. And uh, we can't wait to do a project and make Rich Square really proud of the two of us. So I was born in this building here, right? The one of the cars parked in front of. And growing up in this small town, um, I did not have a lot of opportunities um, to learn about art um, growing up. Um, art was not taught in the schools I attended. There was no museums or galleries to go into to see artwork. And I didn't have a family member to bring me into his or her studio to show me what an artist did. So my first art teachers actually came from this pharmacy. Now. TV was also important, so I saw, saw cartoons. I like the cartoons I saw on television. But in this pharmacy, I saw comic books. And one of my favorite comic books was The Master Kung Fu, um, The Hands of Shang Shai. Um, and some of you younger kids probably know this from the movie that came out um, last year. Um, but I grew up with the comic book um, and the drawings, the artwork in the comic book, which I thought was very different from most comic books. They were a little darker, a little more mysterious. And I just, and I love the way that um, the illustrator would add in animals that often were not mentioned in the text at all. So, you know, um, but the movement, the dark shadows, all those things really caught my attention. So I started copying these. Um, also, Mad Magazine was a big influence. The, um, artists like Mort Drucker and all so many others. They had spoofs on movies. This was a treasure chest for me. And I would um, copy these. I started making up comic books about my friends and I doing different things and really uh, taught myself a lot about drawing. Um, even I would, any magazine I saw about drawing, I would check out books about drawing from my um, elementary school, middle school, um, things on television I would watch. I was, I was this kid thirsting to learn more about how to do art. And it was in the third grade, it's when I decided I wanted to be an artist. Then I got a little lucky, things changed for me. I moved away from North Carolina, I moved to New Jersey. I moved to a suburb of New Jersey called Bergenfield. This is right across from the George Washington Bridge. And I got, this is me in high school, the real, treasure about Bergenfield was it had this amazing high school and one wing in this high school was dedicated to the arts and everything you can imagine was taught there from drawing, painting, photography, filmmaking. We made our own Super 8 films. We edited them. We added sound to them. We developed the film. Um, ceramics was offered there and you can take an entry-level foundation year. A lot of the instructors uh, the teachers went to Pratt Institute and they sort of developed a Pratt Institute model um, where you would um, have a foundation year, then you have your classes, and then you have independent study after you've had three classes. And there you can do drawing from the model, um, um, art history and other things. It was absolutely amazing. So for, and my high school art teacher um, really helped me out a lot when I was there. Um, Charlie Bogusat, um, um, who taught filmmaking. I made lots of films. I, I wanted to be a filmmaker when I was in high school. Then I went to Pratt Institute. And at Pratt is where I had my real first encounter with art history and fell in love with painting and painters and sort of lost my interest in filmmaking. And illustration was my major. And um, this is where um, I started developing my 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 artistic style. At a Purple Rain party, and for those of you who are too young, Purple Rain, um, Prince is the singer, and he had an album Purple Rain, movie Purple Rain, and they had a party on campus where he played all Prince music. And I asked this young lady named Lisa to dance, <laughs> and we've been dancing together ever since. Oh, that's a nice story. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and we got married about two or three years after we graduated from Pratt Institute. She went there as well, both were Pratt students. 
Yeah. Um, so what, was, what type of work did I do when I was there? I did drawings like this. This is a self-portrait using a ballpoint pen. This is probably 40 by 60. So it's probably close to life size. This is a foundation project. This is something I did my sophomore year. And this is where I got interested in sports and athletes. And I thought the idea of cropping in and capturing movement and, um, and using graphics like the symbols and like the numbers as, as symbols and flat shapes all became part of my sort of vocabulary that I was developing while I was in school. And for my senior project, I went back to my high school. I did a series of paintings on the high school football team practicing. Because at that time, my dream was to do a, to work for Sports Illustrated. I wanted to do painting. I wanted to travel the world, do paintings of bullfighters in Spain, you know, and this person fishing there, all for Sports Illustrated. That was my dream to work for them. I did this painting my last year in school also, and this painting became quite popular. It was wow. based on a painting by Klimp, and I put these bikers going through the park. And it was into, into a contest at the Society of Illustrators. And it was used on the cover of the catalog. And it, um, I, I got a scholarship award. So the Society of Illustrators and I have gone way, 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 way back. Um, yeah. And it was also used by Citibank on a calendar. They had a, um, a marketing campaign where they wanted to show how student loans help dreams come true. And believe me, I had some loans from Citibank. That's not why they picked me. I just happened to be random. But um, they used that piece on the calendar and an, a licensing agent saw this piece. Now I had no idea what a licensing agent was. A licensing agent is someone who takes existing artwork and they find places on it for, in other places. So, my, so within a year of graduating, I had this agent and he put this, um, the biker piece on a greeting card for Father's Day. He led, it led to doing these shop, wow. these tote bags for different, Beautiful. it was sold in stores produced by two different companies. And um, they, were every, you know, they were everywhere um, in the city. How exciting. Um, yeah. yeah, very, very <laughs> exciting. This was, you know, I, again, I'm, I'm right out of school. This yeah. is so amazing to me. And uh, all these paintings are done large, they're like 40 by 60, you know? Mm. And, um, and then they made, uh, it came with a variety of sizes and greeting cards. And one of them was made into a jigsaw puzzle. And oh. um, this was so much fun having it, the puzzle out there and everything. Yes. So, so now I live in New, I live in um, New York State, about an hour and a half north of New York City, um, in the Hudson River, in the Hudson Valley, along <laughs> the Hudson River, <laughs> in yes. this house in Rhinebeck, New York. And it is snowing now. <laughs> like it's, it's getting heavier and heavier as I speak. Um, <laughs> if you come to Rhinebeck, and if you like World War I airplanes, you can actually take go to see a show at the aerodrome, and you can ride in one of these if you're brave enough. It's actually on my bucket list to do this, because I'm wow. really a big fan of World War I airplanes. Wow. You can stay at the Beekman Inn, which is supposedly one of the oldest inns in the country. Supposedly, George Washington stayed there. Mm. Also living in Rhinebeck are lots of artists, writers, filmmakers, um, you know, yeah. you name it. Um, mm -hmm. Peter McCarty, illustrator of Hondo and Fabian, also lives here in Rhinebeck. Um, Jessica Love um, and her um, has newly moved here uh, maybe two years ago. And uh, she has a newborn baby. Um, oh, I, I, I first met Jessica at the Society of Illustrators at an event, and she now lives here in Rhinebeck with her husband. Yeah. And um, James Gurney, the um, um, he's probably more famous today for his landscape paintings, but he wrote and illustrated Donatopia, those series of books about Donatopia. Mm -hmm. And these are our four children. Um, yeah. this, is, um, this is our oldest, Jamie. Um, she's in Syracuse in grad school for museum studies. Um, then we have Maya, who lives in the city. She is a graphic designer in New York City. Package design is what she specializes in. Mm. Um, Malcolm lives in New York City also, and he's um, sort of an artist of a lot of different things, from websites to um, illustrations he does sometimes and uh, other things. And then we have Layla, who is in college in Georgia um, at Emory. If I didn't say that, my wife would kill me. Um, she's at Emory, <laughs> and she's graduating this year, which I'm, I can't wait because that tuition bill is killing me. 
<laughs> What's her major? Uh, uh, linguistics is her major. Oh, so she's, that, what, yes. in, in some ways it's, it's, it's connected to what we do, but not directly connected to what we yes, do. Yes, but what a lot of artists in the family. I wonder where <laughs> they got their inspiration in those genes. <laughs> they've, been, they've been drawing for a long time, long time. <laughs> Wow. This is um this is the patchwork quilt. This is a book written and illustrated. I mean, illustrated by Jerry Pinkney. Oh, I meant to say that. Yes. Um, I so I make a long. I'm gonna make a long story short. Um, I met Jerry when I was in college. His son happened to be going to Pratt at the same time. Anyway, mm -hmm. I, I discovered him. I discovered him in the Society of Illustrators annuals, and he came. And I couldn't believe his son was in you know in the same program as I was in. Um, my Lisa bought me this book when I was in, we were in college and she worked at the Brooklyn Museum. Mm -hmm. And um, I saw this book and I thought, well, you know, the sports, maybe I'll do a children's book in between the sports every now and then just for the fun of it. You know, mm -hmm. a little kitty book, you know, just for fun. So yeah. for my portfolio, I did three paintings about a little girl who's doing everyday things. Um, and these are three paintings that were in my portfolio that mm -hmm. led to me doing my first picture book, which is called Do Like Kyla. Do the like story Kyla. of a little girl, I'm gonna actually tell you the story, and her sister, and we spend a day with them. Um, we have, they have breakfast, they get dressed, um, they put their coats on, and then they go to the store and we meet some people in the store in the neighborhood, and they step, 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 and crunch, 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 all the way back home. Um, it's really a fun little sort of um, book, but this is the book that got me started. This is what started it all. And I really enjoyed doing this. And before I was doing editorial work, but it was something about a book, which I was always attracted to. And when I lived in North Carolina, I had, it was very hard for me to get books, but I, I would order books from Mad Magazine. Um, I always was interested in books. And, um, so doing a book was special and I had a long, I had a year to illustrate this. It wasn't like the editorial stuff that was so fast and then it seemed to, to disappear so quickly. So I, I, I like this book stuff. So I'm, I started showing my work to more publishers. Next, I was asked to illustrate Aunt Flossie's Hats and Crab Cakes Later. <laughs> the story of Susan and Sarah going over Aunt Flossie's house on Sunday. She has a wonderful hat collection and in that collection, when the kids pull out the hats, she tells them the stories behind that collection. And they help tell the last story because they was actually there when Aunt Flossie wore this hat. Then there's Uncle Jed's Barbershop. The story of Uncle Jed who dreams of opening a barbershop and he tells this to his favorite niece, Sarah Jean, how he want, he's been saving his money and he's almost ready to open his shop when she gets sick and they have to take her to the hospital. In the hospital, they discover she needs an operation. So her, so Uncle Jed has to loan her parents money so she can have this operation. A few years pass and Uncle Jed has saved his money again. He's ready to open his shop when he gets more bad news. The Great Depression is starting and the bank that had his money, he had his money in has closed. He's lost all of his savings. So now he's going to start saving all over again. Then the man here sitting next to Uncle Jed, playing the part of Uncle Jed's brother, is illustrator Jerry Pinkney, oh. um, who became, who actually became a very dear friend of mine. Mm -hmm. So after I graduated and I started working on my first book, I wrote Jerry. He invited me up to his studio, and for the next ten years, he mentored me. Um, I, he shared his work with me. I showed, he critiqued my work. He taught me a lot about the business. Um, unfortunately. Um, Jerry um, passed um, just this past October. So and I, I miss him dearly. Um, yeah, it was um, amazing. I meant to mention that, that you had him as a mentor and a friend. Yeah, fantastic. Oh, so much, so much to talk about. And such a lovely human being, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. That, and that's, and I, I, know I love that more about um, Jerry than anything, that people always say, say, you know, he's a great artist, but they also go on to say a great person. And really sometimes that's not always the case. And I, 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 that's what really um, excites me that he's, you know, he'll be known as a great person as well as a great artist. Yes. Um, you too, James. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm trying. I'm, I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> um, so other books I've done, um, Red Dancing Shoes, um, How Many Stars in the Sky, um, All the Lights in the Night. And then um, the book that won um, 
the Credit Scott King Award, The Creation, which is a story yes. based on James Weldon Johnson's How the World Was Created. Um, new books. Um, Sonny Rollins plays the bridge. Um, this book is about the sax a saxophone player, Sonny Rollins, who is still alive, um, lives in Woodstock. Uh, when mm -hmm. he was very young, he actually decided to take a sabbatical. He wanted to walk away from playing. He wanted to take some time to play better, to, to retool. And he felt that he was close to what he, the sound that he wanted, but he felt he could get better. So first he started rehearsing on in his apartment. His wife quickly kicked him out to the back, to the um, um, fire escape and neighbors started complaining. So he had to find a new place to play. So he went down um, Delancey Street and he went to Williamsburg Bridge and there on the Williamsburg Bridge, he, bridge, he could play, 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 morning, evening, night, subway trains passing by became part of the sound, tugboats, people walking by, all those sounds of the city became part of um, him improving his um, art style, his style of um, playing, and he's one of the best saxophone players today. Oh, now, yes. Do you I know him, James? I didn't have the pleasure to meet him. He's sort of um, not seeing people now, um, mm -hmm. but um, it's just really just a pleasure just to, um, to do that book about him. I oh, actually, really went, mm -hmm. actually walked across the Williamsburg Bridge, mm -hmm. um, and I wanted to trace the steps that he did. I walked to where he lived as well mm -hmm. and walked to the bridge. So I know, I know the, the path that he took to get there. He lived very close to the bridge, very close. Very good research um, for your book. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. yes. Uh, especially, you know, I, it, crossing Williamsburg Bridge is, well, people do it all the time, but I, you know, I've, I've done the Brooklyn Bridge, but it's, you know, and I, and I had the wrong shoes on when I went. Uh. <laughs> I took my shoes off. And, and then oh. I, I was in the biker side and the bikers don't like when you're on their side. And I was oh, walking. that's true. Yes, yes. So I, you had to, I had to learn some, it's quick, some New York learning on, this, on, this, on my feet. Yeah. Um, this is a new book that just came out um, just this um, uh, past January, this is January, this book, Hard, Hard Court came out, 75 Years of Basketball. Um, this is for older kids. And last year we had Gridiron come out, which oh, is yeah. 100 years mm -hmm. of football. Um, this is a book that I asked the writer, uh, Fred Bowen, to write. I'm a big football fan. And um, mm -hmm. so he wrote this book um, about the history of football. Yes, right. And now we have The Bell Rang. Um, this is a very special book. This is um, it's a book that I wrote and illustrated. I, I don't write a lot of my books. I think this is maybe the fifth book that I wrote and illustrated. So every now and then I get an idea and my wife says she doesn't want to do it. And I feel like I can't ask another writer to do it because it, it maybe it's too personal or maybe I do ask another writer and they say, no, they don't want to do it. Then, it, then I will give it, I will find the time to do it myself. Um, Beautifully written this book, by well, the thank way. You. Thanks a lot. Thank well, of you. Course, and it's won awards. I mean, yes, I wanted to mention multi award winning, which of well, course you all know. <laughs> well, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, this is a story. Um, I really wanted. So, there's two reasons why this book was written. A, I wanted to show kids what it was like for an, on an average sort of plantation, a week was like for, for, for an enslaved person. Um, and then I also wanted to deal with this, um, and when I was, when I got this idea, when I was, the idea came from people were migrating from South America to this country. And there's all, you know, people, some people were against it, some people for it. And I, I started thinking about the people they were leaving and what is it, how difficult it is for people to leave a place, to go someplace else, to make life better for them. And people were migrating from this country for centuries. Um, you know, um, de Cooney hopped on a boat, didn't tell his family, and ended up in America, you know, and um, he had the fortune that he could actually write, call, and connect with them. But, you know, some people come here and they, and they don't, they lose that connection. But the whole idea of how difficult it is to leave a place where you've grown up, where your siblings, your brothers and sisters, your aunts, uncles, cousins all live, and to say goodbye to them, to go someplace that's better for you is something that I'm, I find very interesting. So this story starts off with days of the week and we have Monday. The, the father gets up, he cuts the wood, the mother prepares the meal, and the family comes together 
and they had breakfast together. So this is something that all kids can identify with. Um, then they, um, they walk out to a certain spot on the plantation and the mother and father say goodbye to the youngest daughter because she's gonna go and stay with the eldest person on the farm, on the plantation. This day, her brother kind of touches her, you know, you know how siblings are, they don't touch, you know, <laughs> all those things. So I want, I want to connect also to, to what contemporary kids, they have those same type of feeling, but she, she recognizes that her brother touched her and she sort of st startled by that. And her and all the other young kids go off to the oldest person on the plantation to watch them because they're too young to work in the fields. Tuesday, same routine. Father gets wood, mother cooks, they go off, and, with, and she goes off with the uh, oldest person of the field. Wednesday, basically the same thing happens, but this day, her brother gives her a doll that he's made. He, you know, and these are his two friends behind her. That's really important, those two friends behind them. Mm -hmm. And she loves it. She cherishes this doll, of course. She goes to stay with the, uh, this elderly lady, and she has this doll. Her other friends want to play with it. They play, I want kids to learn, know that, they, that slaves play games jump rope, hopscotch, other sort of games they, they played. Thursday, <clears throat> they wake up and her brother is gone. Also those two boys, young men who was with her, with them, with him are also gone. Of course, this destroys everything. They're very upset uh, um, about him being gone. They're afraid for him. They don't, no one knows what happens. Friday, um, they have breakfast and now we notice one person's missing. So a very similar scene, but now we have someone who's missing. Mm -hmm. um, she's not really in the mood to play with people. So she's just her and her doll, which reminds her of her brother. Um, Saturday, um, it's a half day of work on Saturday. And in the afternoon, they go to their garden. So they're entrepreneurial, they have their own garden, they raise, raise vegetables. Um, I wanted kids to understand that slaves did that um, as well. Um, and sometimes they would sell those things to earn, to earn some money. And this is how some slaves actually bought their freedom. Um, I'm sorry. So, but on Saturday, two slaves are captured and brought back to the plantation. And she, the question is, is it her brother? It is not her brother. Her brother is not amongst the, um, those two who were brought back. So he's still out there, but his two friends were captured. Sunday, they pray and hope that he's still okay, that he makes it north. Um, and we never know the end. Um, um, what happened to him, we hope and pray that he is successful. Yes. Books done with my wife. Before she was Harriet, um, so, which we talked about already, sorry, Harriet Tubman, uh, My Dance, My Story. This book was oh. done in pastels. Um, so I've changed mediums, which is not something a lot of illustrators do. Um, I, I work in, I've started off working in oils. Then I went to acrylics. Now I work mostly in watercolor and I do pastels sometimes and pencils sometimes as well. Um, and with this, I, I sort of collaging, putting, gluing down paper on top of paper and then drawing on it and using different colors. What I love about pastel is I'm able to work with the paper. I love the idea of the, this is the paper color coming through and not covering everything up like I used to do with oils. Um, and then to show movement, you know, the guy used pastels. Um, I wanted to show movement in this book. So primarily, the primary reason why I use pastels so I can do these drawings to show him dancing around. Germs, boy, have we been talking about germs <laughs> for, for the last <laughs> two years. Um, we did this book before the pandemic um, and it's one of my favorite books. Um, it's done in watercolors. It's done lightly, as you can see. Um, it's a very different, little different style because again, we, we, want, to, we, know, uh, we want to show faces on the germs, germs are everywhere. I love this, which is one of my favorite scenes. These things <laughs> kill germs and here's germs, on, they don't like those things. <laughs> and then of course, there's good germs, there's bad germs and they fight each other um, often. Um, germs are everywhere. And if you note closely, Pratt Institute's there um, yeah. Yeah, and there's yeah. Village Pizza. And this is a gym that you know I go to sometimes, not enough <laughs> and stuff like that. <laughs> And in this book, you also learn about the person who created the first microscope to see germs. And you learn about Louis Pasteur. 
uh, mm -hmm. Pasteur, who, um, who also discovered germs and, and pasteurizing and things like that. So um, this is just a, a fun book of a, for young kids to learn about germs. Sorry. Venus and Serena Williams. Um, I'm a big fan of theirs. I begged my wife to do a book about them for years and finally convinced her. And um, I did this book all almost all in collage. There's a few pages where it's paint, um, almost everything else is collage. And I love this idea of working with paper, found paper, purchase paper, making my paper, uh, hole punchers, um, um, tape and all those things. I try to use everything except paint in this book. And I started going to different places like Michael's and uh, craft stores to buy my materials rather than an art supply store. These were all inspired by some of my abstract um, collages that I've done over the years, um, pieces like this. After doing these, and these are all about 22 by 30 in size, I, I, that gave me the courage to do this book in pastels, I mean, in, in collage. So these yeah. are some of those collages. And these are some of the paintings, or, or collages, I should say. Um, Venus Serena, Serena Williams when they were very young, um, them in bed dreaming about um, what type of house uh, famous they're going to be one day. Um, these stars are all hole punched, you know, regular hole puncher, and there's yellow paper behind it. Um, you know, some, I, this, this idea of using materials that anyone has access to also is a big part of um, my um, practice now. Mm -hmm. The things they learned to do, and so they grew up to be superstar tennis players. Um, and a lot of these pieces were, you know, used from paper, and I would have to work backwards. So you draw on the back of the paper and cut it out, and you end up with these paper dolls that you then would glue down onto the, um, the surfaces. Overground Railroad. This is done, uh, this is a story about a, a family migrating north. Um, and it's done in watercolors and pastel. I mean, watercolors and collage, I'm sorry. So um, some parts of watercolor, some parts of collage. Um, it's all about, and I did this mainly because I wanted these patterns. Um, I love you know, all these sort of different patterns that I didn't, I didn't think I could paint. It'd be easier to cut them out and glue them down. And here. So collaging is when you take exists, something that exists and you repurpose it, or you cut it up or you tear it and you glue it down, you make something brand new from it. So that's what collage is. So she's reading a book on this on the train ride, and the book is about Frederick Douglass and how he escaped in the Underground Railroad and for his freedom. And this is a picture of Frederick Douglass um, writing his bio, um, bio uh, uh, biography that she's now reading, and she compares her journey going north with his journey going north. And this is a train. And these are my wife's um, middle grade books. Um, Finding Langston is her probably most popular book that she's done. And I've done the covers for all of these, Leaving Liming and Being Clem, um, each one done in a different medium. This is something I did for the subway system, um, subway system in New York City. Um, they asked me to do, um, because I live in the Hudson Valley, which is a train ride. And the train that I take is actually a subway train, the Metro North train going up to Poughkeepsie from New York City. So they, they asked me to do a piece about that. And this was on a number of the trains in New York City for an entire year. It was on some of my favorite trains, like the six train, and the seven train. So this was great. I love this. People would mm -hmm. send me pictures of themselves <laughs> underneath my, um, my poster. So it was, it was great for a year. Yes. Other posters I've done, dreams to support, to, to um, build, support the idea of women in mathematics and science. Major Taylor to raise money for the Major Taylor Association. Um, they, were, they needed money to um, build a statue in Worcester, Massachusetts in front of the public library of Major Taylor, which is now there. I feel like I was a small part of it. This is um, in Indianapolis um, Children's Museum. It's a story time exhibit. I did the painting for this. This is the Underground Railroad Museum in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, when they were just laying the foundation for this museum, they asked me to do three murals for them. Um, this one's 10 feet by 10 feet. Um, and this is what it looks like when you're sitting in a center of the place. So this side is 10 feet by 17 feet. This is 10 feet by 22 feet. And that's what that looks like when the, there's no statue standing in front of it. Um, and this is the Public Library in Poughkeepsie, New York, which um, I, we used to live in Poughkeepsie. It's a, it's a major branch library in the county. Um, I should say in Northern Dutchess County. 
And so I did this mural for them. This is what it looks like on the wall outside of the children's room. And this is a kid who happened to be coming. Uh, this is, so when, you, when you're very young, you see what's happening underneath the river. And as you grow older, you see what's happening above the river. So how do I illustrate a book? It starts off by reading the story over and over and over again. I take out my sketchbook. I do small sketches in my sketchbook as I read the story, I start getting idea. I, I'm also doing research at the same time. I put, I start a folder in my computer and this is where all my digital imagery is gonna go. And sometimes I scan things that go in there as well. So all by the pages and all my influences, everything's kept here and I keep these almost forever um, so I can refer back to them. But this is where I sort of store everything. Um, I also have lots of books in my studio, which I'm going to show you later. Um, and this, um, these are some of the books that I have on different animals, people, and things like that. I also use Google searches. Um, it's actually much faster. I probably use those more than I look at the books, to be completely honest with you. But this is an example of some of the things I would collect to do a, to illustrate a book. Videos, brochures, books, magazines, all sorts of things. I do what's called a photo shoot where I bring in real people. This happens to be Donald Cruz, the, the illustrator, um, 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 Caldecott winning illustrator, Donald yeah. Cruz, who lives not too far from here in Germantown. We're actually having lunch together on Thursday. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and this is a, a young man who lives here in town. So they are posing for me. So I take pictures of them in my house, photographing. I take lots of pictures. And I sort through them and choose the ones I feel work closest to what I want, but I'm always moving and tampering and, and moving things around. This is a book I illustrated a few years ago called Northbound. And I'm gonna show you how I created this page here um, for Northbound, this title page. So it starts off, this is my sketch and you see how it changed a lot from the sketch. Thank God, the sketch is not that good. <laughs> so <laughs> we have the bicycle was from online the car, online, photograph of the dog, got it from online, Google search. The house is actually a house in the neighborhood. I drove by, I don't know the people who live there. And I took pictures um, of, the, of the house. And then I put those all together on tracing paper. So I work with layers of tracing paper. The lighter areas are, I should say, these areas here is actually Xeroxes. So I work with a sort of combination of, of tracing paper and enlarging and reducing things to get the size I need. I tape it all down and then I transfer it to paper I'm gonna paint on and I paint it, which you'll see in a second. So that's what the finish looks like. So there's a drawing in my dummy book and that's a drawing before I paint. Drawing in my dummy book, drawing before I paint. And then I start painting. I put a wash of color down on all the surfaces I'm gonna paint on. So it looks like that. And then I slowly build up until it's all finished. And that's the finished illustration. Um, and now I'm gonna show you my studio. I may need to turn some lights on because it looks a little dark in here. I'm gonna stop sharing. <laughs> that was fantastic, James. Thank wow, you. wow, <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm so glad it's been recorded so we can all watch it again. Oh, you're, you're, Share it. You're, you're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, so um, I'm going to start off by showing you that it's snowing outside. Oh, yes. You've got quite a good glare. Yeah. This is my view. Um, it's you know, very relaxing, helps me think. Sometimes I'll look up and I'll see a fox go through the yard, or deer, or turkey, and things like that. So it's sort of. <laughs> Interesting to see the, the kingdom, the wild kingdom outside yes. my um, outside my window. This, yeah, is, um, this is my table. I sort of store things. I I work on um, on paper that I staple to boards, very much like a watercolor artist. Um, and mm -hmm. they're stored here. Um, yeah. Is this? Well, there's one. Yeah. Yeah, this is really, this is an abstract piece. Sorry about that. But that's sort of how it looks when I'm working. And I can take these, I take these boards over to that table that I was just sitting at, as you can see, and I paint there. So, and then I have a wall, which I'll show you closer later over there, where I put these once they're done. 
Um, mm -hmm. So I can see, I don't put them in order. I don't like to see the book in order until it's actually finished. So I just want to see them as individual paintings at this point. Um, so here's where I cut things. I keep paper. Um, this is part of um, the next book I'm working on, um, a book, um, a homeless book. Um, there's some of the this drawings there. Um, then I have my flat files here. Well, I should say, show you this collage and papers. I have tons of papers and all this stuff is for collaging. Uh, and, and, these, and I use um, paper like this as well, wrapping paper for collaging also. Um, mm -hmm. So then I have my flat files. These are current projects I'm working on. These are more paper, you know, lots of paper. Um, it's everywhere. Um, I have friends who do collaging digitally because they no longer want to do the paper stuff. And I, I can get that. I understand that completely. <laughs> but it's um, nice to have the materials too. <laughs> yeah, I, I like it. I like paper. You know, my, yeah. the most important books in my studio are over here. Um, we have a dog and this is where he sleeps sometimes. His name is Miles. Um, oh. um, um, so he sleeps there sometimes when he's in the studio. Um, this is a painting that I'm working on. Can you see this well? Yes, we can. Yes, you can see how large that is too. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so this is, I'm thinking of collaging um, over, over the paint, um, these leaves. I, I need to paint some leaves. Um, that's why you see that green thing there. I'm going to paint leaves there. And I'll glue them on. So collaging is part of my studio art practice um, yes. also. So I paint and um, collage Fantastic. there. Oh, gosh. This Very is my, <laughs> oh, thank you. This is my palette, believe it or not. So I usually um, stand here. Um, I have paints. All my acrylic paints are here. Um, oil paints are here. I don't really use those a lot anymore. Other supplies are down here. Um, I have this whole big surface for doing large paintings. Um, here are some other paintings I'm working on. Um, quilts is a theme that um, pops up in a lot of my paintings. Um, these are for shows that are coming up. This is one that's finished. Um, the way, how can you see that well, the pink lady? Yes, yes. Okay. And so um, um, that was, and there's one on the wall back there too. Um, over here is where I'm currently working on um, a CD cover. And so you can see um, you know, how I sort of work on my, this is my light box. So um, this is where everything is starts here, you know. Um, oh yes, the light box is very handy tool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I, what's great about this is you know, those of you who work digitally, you know this already. I mean, you know, I could flip this over, you know, and look at it either way. That's what the light box helps me do. I, mm -hmm. I enlarge. You know, this is I started off as a tracing, as a as a drawing on tracing paper. Of course, I won't be able to find it now. And I, and I just reduce it down, if, you know, and make it larger or smaller if I want to. Um, it really helps me. All the books I'm looking at, you know, on cars and photographs of people, stuff like that. James, look, I want to go in your studio and start doing some artwork. <laughs> it's so exciting. You're welcome any time. You're welcome any You have a lot going on. You're working on several projects and you have little stations for them all. It's really fun. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, somehow it worked out that way. I, I didn't really think about that. Someone pointed it out recently. Um, yeah. So here, here are awards are up there. If you have people want to wear the awards, go to awards, go up there for the most part. Um, yes, many awards, well-deserved. You're so amazing. Pictures of Lisa and I when we were in college um, together. Um, That's fun. An old contact sheet, right? Yes, yeah, the contact sheet blown up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, very nice. Very, very nice. Younger kids probably don't know what contact sheet is. No. <laughs> <laughs> There's a contact sheet blown up. Um, I had a friend who was a photo major in, uh, when we were in Pratt, and he, mm. he did that for us. Um, and then my, my book collection. Um, a lot of reference and research books over here. Um, children's books are over here. Like all my favorites go to here. Um, <laughs> they come down here. Jerry Pinkney's books start here and go over. My books are on the very bottom. A lot of how-to books are sort of there. And almost everything on this side is sort of reference, you know, historical books, houses, buildings, animals, all those sort of things. <laughs> Middle grade books that I've done covers for. Um, oh, and you love jazz, don't you? You love I jazz. I do. Yes, yes. I'm a big jazz. That's what's playing when I'm in the studio. 
Um, you're gonna hear Jazz. You'll come in. You're gonna hear WBGO from Newark. I gotta plug them. They're doing a fundraiser now, so <laughs> okay. I listen to them online. You know. Um, then we have yeah. more books. No, more just books. a few more books. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then more collage stuff. More, uh, more just collage stuff. More stuff. All <laughs> grays are in here. All blues are in there. You know. Um, Fantastic. Um, this it's is fantastic. where. So if you come back in here, if you came here a month from now, you'll see the next book I'm working on. All the finished pieces will be on this wall. Oh, um, that's are, a, could you lift up the camera a little bit? So yeah, just a bit higher. Yeah, yeah. yes. So that's these like are, in a classroom that kids would have at school. They put their artwork, oh, you know, they- Yes, 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 yeah. yeah. So, um, these are some collages that um, for shows. I just put them up just to look at them. Now here's something that I do. This is not glued down to this. So I, uh, I'll take it on, I'll look at it and say, well, do I like it? Uh, you know, do, how would I want it? Do I want to turn it this way? Do I want, you know, it'll, it'll do, I'll do that for a period of time. And then one day I'll come in and just go, you know what? I like it like that. And I take the glue and I'll glue it down. So okay. um, there's a lot um, of spontaneity in the, in the work. I don't really plan a lot of things out. Um, wow, wow, James. I'm sure we'll have lots of questions, right, kids? <laughs> so when um, James starts his workshop any moment, you can think of some questions. I mean, yes. how long have you lived in your house that you've had this studio? <laughs> a while, right? Oh, how long have I lived here? Oh, yeah. Oh, um, I, we've lived here for um, 18 years and the studio was built two years after moving here. Yeah, so I just wanted to point out that, you know, James has had his studio and he's been collecting things and that, you know, that's why it's so rich and full of amazing things. <laughs> That's a lot it's, of things. And, and kids, you can start collecting things. You're looking in your books, collecting paper scraps, and it, it's really helpful to your inspiration when you're creating artwork. So that's what <laughs> artists do, don't they? <laughs> yes. Well, I, I would like to really encourage uh, keeping a sketchbook. You know, Absolutely. That, and, yes. And this way of sort of um, organizing your 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 thoughts and your collection. You know, mm -hmm. you can put everything from places you travel. If you write, you can write in your sketchbook. Yes. And you put um, pictures, um, um, things you collect, pamphlets, um, sketch ideas, ideas for the future that you want to, things you want to paint and draw. I, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in sketchbooks. Um, I have a sketchbook for my studio artwork that I, I keep ideas in. Um, so mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of sketching and putting things in a sketchbook. Yes, yes, that's wonderful. Well, we're getting lovely comments in the chat. We've got people from all over the states. Um, I saw Iowa, Arizona, and people are saying amazing. So thank you so much for all this rich information, <laughs> visually and uh, you know, you're, you're just you're hearing you talk about your work. And yes, um, so are we going to get started with a little workshop now? So get your materials. Ready, guys. Hope you're all ready to watch James draw live. This is going to yes, be really good. Yes. Well, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do something that I saw when I was in the um, probably the sixth grade. I saw someone do this on television on PBS, and I just couldn't wait to get a pen and paper and um, and see what I could do. So I'm gonna show you guys this um, this thing with numbers that I like to do when I do um, school visits. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna ask Claire to give me a number between one and ten. I'm gonna write okay. that number down. And I'm gonna draw something from that number. So what's okay. your first number? Number Claire? three, please. Three? Okay. So we have the number three. So this is really an important, and this may be backwards for some of you, and I apologize for that. Um, it's, Actually, yeah, it um, looks good for my screen. Um, so um, number three, everyone can write, write the number three, hopefully, um, if you're old enough, um, you can write number three. So if you can write number three, you really can draw because three is a shape. And the most important thing about drawing and painting and art is shapes and noticing and recognizing shapes. So when I see the number three, this is one of the things I see that I like to draw Wow. <laughs> That's how talented James is. He can do it from the side. 
from behind so, and at the side. <laughs> we, we have a construction worker, right? So if you, um, if you want to draw a construction worker, sometimes it's good to start off with the number three. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's do another number, Claire. Okay, um, let me give you a number nine. Oh, one of my favorites. This is one of my oh, favorites. Okay, good. Actually, it's, it's probably my absolute favorite. Um, number nine. Um, okay. Oh, <laughs> pilot. Oh, yes. Wow. Yes. And uh, let's do a number 10. Okay. Let's go. Oops. Switch. Got the switch. Oh, a pirate, is it? Yes, a pirate. Yeah, a pirate. <laughs> Fun pirate. Can everybody see that? Sometimes the light's shining on it a tad. Yeah, there we go. See the pirate? He's got his head scarf, his patch, and his saber, <laughs> his belt. <laughs> Earring. Earring. <laughs> uh, oh, I, I like a number two. <laughs> okay. Make this one easy. At this point, people start guessing what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And they're usually right on this one because it's. All right. Can anyone guess? Put it in the chat. It's an artist. Yes, yeah, there's his palette, right? And his beret. Yeah. Yeah. So I like how you can, so, I like that you do the number in another color so it still stands out that you can yeah, see yeah, it's yeah. coming it's, from. Again, it's about shapes. You know, you can use about letters. Shapes. Yes. You know, you, well, you, I would think a number four might be tricky. Okay. What's the number four? <laughs> I can also do the other four as well with the point. Um, right. This, right. This is my favorite four. Um, you know, I, I think about what to draw with them and, um, how much fun it is to draw with them. So I usually go for the ones that- You've got um, a little bit of um, brightness on the page. Yeah, that's better there. Yeah, that's much better there, perfect. Oh, we can see who this is now. Now he's been riding his cowboy way too long. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the bent legs, John yeah. Wayne. <laughs> yeah. so, so fun, wow. You do these so speedily. <laughs> Very, very um, fun to do it with numbers, everybody. Do your yeah. own, okay, if you come up with something that you want to do. Well, yeah. we have to have a five, don't we? You have to have five. Okay. Oh, baseball hat. Oh, and a big nose. Oh, hilarious. <laughs> oh, yes, here's this baseball bat. I messed, I messed up. <laughs> <laughs> you can make that into something. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, a, baseball a baseball player with a very big nose. <laughs> nose. <laughs> <laughs> very fun. It's always, it's always great to do these with kids you know, um, in person because they can actually participate and they, their five, their four, their two, their one is actually part of the drawing. So it's really a collaborative um, you know, effort, which I really yes. like. Um, you know, and you can just keep going with it, right? You can keep doing more and more, just thinking of more things that the, oh. you know, the numbers remind you of. Absolutely. Um, I'm gonna do a seven. Yes, yes, a seven, good. One of my favorites. 
Um, Oh, wow. That's his arm, yeah. Oh, look, everybody. Do you know what this is? Oh, yes. Has anyone guessed it? Yes, a magician. <laughs> One of my favorites. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, the rabbit coming out of the top hat. Yes. Um, well, an eight must be fairly um, inspiring for everybody. I can think of something that might be from outside your window. <laughs> that would be a very easy one. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it instantly looks like a snowman. Yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> the number eight makes a very good snowman. Yeah. Who's this little guy? Let's see. Oh, a conductor. Yes, a music conductor. Yeah. Yes, a conductor. So with his baton, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, you've got a one. I think that just a one. Yeah, just a one is left. Okay, okay. So, well. This is always interesting. Sometimes this is hard for young men, young to get. Mm hmm Oh, a dancer, a ballerina. Yes, yeah. on point. <laughs> a ballerina on point. Wow, James, those are so lively and so fun. I love that. That's such a fun um, exercise. I've never seen that done, actually. That was a bit of magic by James Ransom. Yeah. <laughs> so people who actually, you know, if you weren't an artist, what would you be? I, was, I, I sort of dreamed of being a magician when I was younger. Um, uh, but well, don't have you magic. <laughs> yeah, I, I have no talent for magic at all, but... <laughs> A magician. Um, Just magic on the paper as an illustrator. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can you share how to draw maybe a face? We've got a bit more time. Uh, sure. Maybe in pencil, you know, like showing how you might draw someone's portrait, for example. Sure, sure, sure. So that those of our participants who like to try out drawing more realistic faces, this is how James would go about drawing. I'm not sure how realistic this is going to be. Well, you know what I mean, just like the shapes in the shapes. Okay, so you know, you start off. This may be hard to see, but I always start off sort of light. Um, I don't, I don't overcommit. I like to sort of keep it general and keep it, um, you know, loose, loose and, and not, and not locked in. So that's why mm -hmm. you know I can do a, if, I, if I wanted to, I could make this circle larger. You know, at some point, let's let's sort of commit a little, just for the camera. We'll we'll commit. Yes. A little, okay. Yes. So, yes, we can see that really nicely. Yeah. yeah. So you know, it's it's not really a round circle. It's kind of sort of elongated. And you know, I I think in terms of you know, where the eyes are going to be, um, where you know, this is the center. So the nose is going to be sort of there. And then we have you know lips, and then we have the um, the chin. And so I may come back in here. You know, let's um, let's do some big ears. Mm -hmm. You can um, then we have the eye socket again. This is probably this is where I'm at now. Right, 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 right. So everybody can see that. Yeah, great. So. Um, you know, you want to think in terms of, sh of shapes. That's really what, that's, that's so important in the beginning to think in terms of shapes. So, you know, we yeah. have this round shape, this round shape. This is sort of a half round, half circle, half circle, okay? Um, here we have another sort of elongated half circle. Here we have a complete circle. And, you know, the nostrils. Right. You know, um, the eye goes up like this in a, a lid. 
Mm-hmm. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, then we have the eyeball, the pupil, pupil. Right. Uh-huh. right. Um, yeah. Then there's actually another part that goes here and goes here. And so we now have something like that. Mm-hmm. Now we're going to. Just make it give some teeth. We'll bring this lip down. Oh, wow, it's coming to life, yeah. Yeah. Um, we had hair. And so we get something like that. And then, mm-hmm. then so it always starts, for me, it always starts with a line drawing. Mm-hmm. And then at a certain point, you want to start adding color, adding sh- values or okay. shading. But mm-hmm. I, I always try to think of it um, only what's needed to help me understand the picture better. So mm-hmm. I don't just sort of go in with shading, just be going in with shading. So like, it's really hard to distinguish and understand the hairline. So I may go in and just start adding with a, a light, again, I do it slowly. I, I do a slow walk into the into the water. I don't just sort of jump in. Mm-hmm. And and I'm only adding shading to help me understand or see this better. Right. That's why that's why I started adding like you know shading like that. You know, usually the top lip is just a little darker than the bottom lip, no matter where or what ethnicity you are, you know, um, is usually shading in he- under here. Uh, you some shading in here, so we're, we're there. Yeah. So, all right, there's usually some shading. This get because this goes back a little bit, so there's some shading in here. This is usually darker. Not always, but usually a little darker. Um, Then we have the eyebrow. And you know, you, you know, you have the neck. You know. Yes, that's great. Yeah. And as you start working on it, you know, you make adjustments, you know, want to bring this ear down now. Does you're already racing? Yes, yes. Uh, you know, sometimes people have a thing against, you know fine tuning it. I mean, James yeah. is working from an angle from sort of behind. <laughs> and so, you know, he's doing it um, so that you can see where to put everything and the steps. And actually what's lovely is you still see shapes. The way you draw James is really like showing shapes, which is yeah. really lovely for kids who are starting to draw. Yeah, um, yeah you, you want to, it's, it's all about shapes. It's all about shapes. You know? Yes. And so the values start helping you just sort of understand things. You know, then at, at this point, for, for me, it's where's the light coming from? At this right. point. Uh, if, if the light's coming from over here, right? So that means this is it starts getting darker over here. Right. So now I again just to help me define this more, um, that's why I start adding shadows to help me define it more. Yes. And so now is is this and this are too close. The hair is on this person is darker. So now I would go darker on the hair. And that's the reason why I go darker on the hair, not just because it is dark, but because now I just need to help you understand it more. So it's so I guess I'm, what I'm also doing is I'm thinking about my audience. I'm communicating with my audience. So in order to help the viewer and to help myself understand this drawing more, I start adding things like more values and things like that. Right. More. Yes. So I need those things. So it starts right. to become more three-dimensional and yeah. you add details. Yes. Yeah. Um, so that would be the difference between doing more of a cartoon style, which is more the fun outlined illustrations and lots of kids love to do cartoons and comics. 
Um, but then if you want to make it more realistic, you start building like James has just shown you in this very, very quick demonstration. But yeah, this is something and you see from um, James's studio that he uses lots of things to help him with reference. So if it's not a photograph of somebody, you could maybe even have somebody in your family sit and you could try to draw them, you draw yeah. yourself looking in a mirror. Um, yeah. books, uh, Google something that you want to draw, like particularly if you're doing something that's realistic, look right. it up, look at the details. Yeah. You can picture it's yourself and use your phone, draw from your phone. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Either. Yeah. Um, do you have a picture digital? Um, somebody's asking. Um, I don't, I don't do digital art, and I, but I have nothing against it at all. Um, I'm not, you know, these people who feel that it, digital art isn't art. It, it is art. It, to me, it's just another medium. And one day yeah. I will do something digital, like like I, I used to work only in oils, and now I work in acrylics and watercolors. One day I will, yeah. my medium, it will be digital. I yeah. used to prefer pencils and pens, and uh, I don't like working at the computer. Um, even when I have to do, things, you know, um, it, it's not fun for me pushing the buttons and stuff like that, or, or um, having a, a fake a drawing on a plastic sheet. It's not how I, you know, is, is that how I think of art when I think of art? I do like yeah. the paper, I like pencils and things like that. So, uh, you know, but I have nothing against it. I have nothing against oh, it. Oh, yes, yes, yes. No, I, I, I... I see that even people who love to do digital and then maybe some of you out there who like to work on Procreate, it's always good to draw on paper as well. Um, don't ever lose track of doing some things on paper because I think that helps you to then draw digitally as well. You know, I my, think that. My favorite digital artists are usually people who do drawings on paper, they scan them in and they color them on the computer. Yes, that's they use it as an, uh, uh, yes, it's a tool. Part. I'm yeah. sure exceptions there, but for the most part, the people that I usually like, and they don't try to make it look traditional. That's not what I'm going, what I'm saying here is, it's just the coloring can probably be not easy is probably not the right word, but you know, it gives you something different, you know, right. uh, what's interesting is, um, I really like the flatness of digital. And, and that's part of what I'm going for in my practice is a certain type of flatness that I, I like, which is very relatable to digital. Mm -hmm. uh, and right. the way I do my traditional work, it's all the components, it's, a, it's the same. I, was, I would tell my students, it's the same thing as working um, digitally. It's with layers, I mean, I'm, yes. a, I'm a big fan of layers, you know? Yes, um, yes. Very, so I understand you know, um, how it works. Um, yeah, and it, I, just, I just prefer cutting things with my hand and, and the accents that happen, which, you know, and, and so some people with digitals, they say, well, I can go back and fix it. It's, I, I like the idea of working with accidents. And mm -hmm. I, I call it the art gods are participating and making it work with me. So if mm -hmm. something happens that I'm not, a, you know, out of my control, that's part of the artwork. It, I don't want to be able to click back and fix that. I want that to be part of the artwork. Right, right. Well, we have some more questions, but also, we don't know what kind of dog you have. So could you draw the, your dog? Can you draw? <laughs> <I cannot laughs> In draw either style, you can do it a little bit more shaded, <laughs> realistic, or you can do it as a cartoon. <laughs> well, we're, we're a little upset with Miles because Miles um, had a night out last night and we just discovered him this morning at someone at a neighbor's house. So Ooh. we're a little upset with him. Oh, is he in the dog house? <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's in a dog. You're great. You're good. You're good. Um, he, he is. Um, he is a um, a pit bull. Um, he's a okay. brown pit bull. Um, and for those for those of you out there who you know who go pit bull, oh my God, um, ditto here. Um, he's a rescue that um, that we, that we brought home to foster and fell in love, and he connected with us. Um, but, oh. it, if you would have thought, if you would have said something to me about a pit bull um, two years ago, I would have said there's no way I would ever have a pit bull. But he's the sweetest dog. He he is really the most gentle dog I've ever um, met. Um, yes, you know what? Some get give the whole breed a bad name, and it's not true. Yeah, there are many, and some people really love that dog breed. You know, they're, yes, they're not just guard dogs or something. They're, they're like yes, family yes. pet. And, and he's so, had a he's had a rough history. So we, we're happy to have him here, and we, but we're we're, um, we're really upset with him because he 
he he had an all nighter last night, and, <laughs> and and so at eleven o'clock last night, who was out in the woods with a flashlight? <laughs> oh gosh! So you, you I, I, actually, I could see when we looked out of your window that you have woods sort of right backing onto your garden, so yeah. he can get in there, can he? Can yes, he get he out can. there. And yeah, so you're he, not really fenced in, are you? <laughs> no, not fenced in. So he went for a nice little journey last night. And um, here are oh. some, here's some pictures of him. Well, it was uh, a full moon week, wasn't it? There was a lot it of... It was. And so I, I, that's what I said to my wife. Is You think it's the full moon? Um, <laughs> no, this is not the greatest picture of him. But this is a picture of him. Um, oh, yes. We can see his like face there. Like, yes. Yeah, with yeah. a brown snout. He's yeah. cute. Yes, he is cute. That's his problem. I meant you draw him a picture, James, not a draw. <laughs> find a picture. I was thinking you could I, draw a dog. <laughs> it must have a bit more time for you to draw a few things. So whatever you would like to draw. Um, uh, I thought it was a, just answer questions. Um, because, um, uh, well, I, I usually ask the questions through the drawing segment. Oh, so, OK. Um, I could draw something. You know, he would. Um, when I when I have when I have to draw something, I really start concentrating. I get quiet, but I will do. I'll draw something for you. I was trying to find. A, I have like a thousand great pictures of him. Of course, I can't find one now. Um, let's see. It doesn't have to be him, but I was thinking okay. that that might be something you could just do as even as a, a line drawing. Um, we do have a question about how do you um, choose your color palette? Um, I still work with a color wheel. Um, I actually, you know, so it's right here. That's how close it is to me when I'm working. Uh -huh. um, I usually just, I, I sort of think in terms of um, the time period. Mm -hmm. um, so in Aunt Flossie's hats, I wanted very earth colors. Yes. Earthy colors. So that's sort of the start. You know, if a book takes place at night, a day, sometimes if I do a book and I'm using mostly blues, I'll do another book and I'm going to try not to use a lot of blues. I just want, because I mm -hmm. want to change it. Um, right. Most recent book I finished, I did it in gray. Mm. So basically black and white with hints of color. That's always nice too, yeah. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I sort of build in these challenges for myself um, to, um, to do things that I that to um, to keep myself um, entertained um, in the studio and yes. challenges I have for, my, for myself. Yes. Um, this is not going to be a good picture of him. Oh well, he's it's it's a another dog. That's just draw a dog. <laughs> we don't know him, James. Don't tell us that it's not a good picture of him. <laughs> <laughs> It's a little bit bright on the paper, oh, so it's a bit... Oh, no. oh, there we go. There he is. He looks like he's sniffing the air and he's about to dart out. <laughs> he looks mean, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to make him look mean. He, you know, something about his um, lip that hangs down, which I really like, which I'm just not doing a good job of that. You know why, Claire? I no. need a reference. Oh, you need a reference. <laughs> Miles is not in the studio right now. <laughs> No, but no, no, hold that up. I just want kids to see how you drew that because look, James drew that very quickly actually. So he's like done the snout of the dog, the nose of the dog, the mouth, the eye, the ear. And all, dogs all have different uh, ears, long ears, pointed ears. And little Miles has like a little flap of an ear. Yeah. So, you know, that I think dogs are really fun for kids to draw because <laughs> there's just so many of them and they just have so many different personalities. Oh, cool. And we, we, we yeah, he, he looks like he's up to some mischief in that, in yeah, that drawing. I'm thinking, of, I'm thinking of last night. That's what I'm doing. Yes, he's, that's the, the drawing of him last night. Exactly. Um, um, do ask him any more questions, everybody, if you have some. Let's have a look here. Um, when you do a mural, James, do you, um, you know, how do you think that out? Do you draw it on paper first as a sketch? I do. I should say this also. I don't do murals on the physical wall. 
Um, oh, okay. I just, don't, I just don't have the time, unfortunately, to go to a place and do scaffolding and paint. Everything. Oh, so they, they print it up onto one of those um, wallpaper type. Exactly, yeah. yes. It's like yeah. wallpaper. So I do a painting and then they scan it and they put it on this paper and they glue the paper to the wall. So it's not actually the, the physical painting that's right. on it. Right, right. So, um, yeah, so um, that that makes it a little easier. Um, yes. Yeah, so, so how large would you work for, for a mural? Would you I, I usually work quite large? Work I try to work large um, yeah. for, um, for the library in Poughkeepsie and the um, museum in Cincinnati. They were both, um, the paintings were probably 60 by 40, um, that sort of size range, 40 by yeah. 40. I, and, they, and they say you can work small, but, but I, I love working large, you know? Yes, yes. I, I'm, you know, for studio art stuff, I, I work even, you know, um, 70 by 70, you know, stuff like that. So I, I work large, but so, so mm -hmm. I like working larger, especially when something's gonna be blown up. It, it's just in my mindset, I just want it to be closer to the size it's gonna be than to work small and then have it blown up. Um, right, right. It won't be there, but um, it's, it's probably all in my mind. And, and <laughs> no, but that's, that's interesting. You know, that you, you don't actually go on, uh, you know, into a place and start painting on the wall. I understand that because they're in different locations, museums and uh, et cetera. Um, Tammy, um, she says, thank you. And as an educator of young children's session has been so informative and helpful. She absolutely loved it. So thank you. And we've got lots of people thank saying you. thank you. And I, I just wanted to tell everybody that, you know, James does have a lot of videos even on his website. So if you want to just follow along and see some more of his, obviously he's very prolific. He does a lot of different artwork styles, but you might have one that resonates with you. So do look into his videos. We also have him featured on our um, Society of Illustrators um, kids page. So James kindly um, gave us a video earlier in the pandemic when we reached out to illustrators. Um, we have other illustrators are also featured there. If you if you have a rainy day, a snowy day, and you're indoors and you want to just get your art materials out and look at illustrators who do wonderful work, um, you can go to our, our website as well. But uh, yeah, Kidlit, very good. Find James on Kidlit. And uh, I hope you're all inspired to do more artwork. Do uh, send in anything that inspired you from this incredible morning with James Ransom. Uh, we had a lovely tour of his studio. We can see how he works. We heard how he started to be an artist. Um, he's got a very artistic family as well. And it was a pleasure, James, to have you this morning. Um, I hope to see you actually live in the future at the Society of Illustrators. <laughs> Or maybe in South Carolina. <laughs> and South Carolina, indeed. Absolutely. Um, so everybody have a wonderful weekend ahead. And thanks to the, um, we, we, we always want to thank um, the Bruce J. Heim Foundation very much for their generous gift to bring this um, Saturday stories to our participants free of charge. Um, they believe that picture books and actually all books really inspire children's dreams and imagination. And so do we at the Society of Illustrators and so do picture book writers and illustrators. And look at the collection of books you have, James. I mean, I love books too. I, I have a book bookshelf behind me with books too. <laughs> and actually I have, I just wanted to show everybody. Um, I've been reading a lot of James's um, books. You know, it's uh, Black History Month. And this, these are books that were written by James's wife, Lisa Klein Ransom. And do go to your library. I found lots of books in my local library here that were written by James. And when I see him in person, I'm going to get him to sign a book that I own of his. So, <laughs> so I really look forward to meeting you, James. And um, everybody have a great weekend ahead. Thanks for joining us and see you next month. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye.